We can't get started. I can't be rude. We we have to do introductions the right way. Um, you know, welcome to the show, everybody that will be tuning into this episode. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like us on Facebook at Wrestling With Things. Um, I am very excited uh, to be able to uh, take the time and uh, have this conversation with our, our guest here today. Um, as Sammy said, that we've really been looking forward to it and we're we're really glad to be able to finally dig deeper and uh, pick our brain today. Um, joining us today is uh, she is a psychotherapist for over 25 years as well as a certified life coach and she also is a uh, certified yoga instructor for over 20 plus years as well um also the host of the love anarchy podcast go check her out on spotify has so many good conversations about self-love uh, mindfulness and relationships uh everybody uh welcome to the show uh andrea atherton how are you today andrea <laughs> i'm excellent thank you for having me so excited to be on absolutely and I, i'm excited to get right into things um starting out i just would like to say would you like to uh add any more background to let people know a little bit more of who you are Yes, of course. Um, so I've been a experiential therapist for years. I do art therapy, verbal therapy. I've worked with addictions, a lot of trauma, um, and eating disorders too. So that my background, but I definitely have done a lot of couples work mm -hmm. and I've enjoyed that so much. And I've really just found my passion in life is to learn about love and teach other people how to love because I really, really, as I've lived these years, I just found it is the only true power. That's how I end my podcast. Love is the only true power. And it's when people get caught up in their egos or in fear. And that's usually connected to the ego. And when we bring love into any situation, whether it be, uh, you know, love or family, it just helps the problem so much. And, yeah. uh, and and I funneled all this into my coaching program. So I have an eight week mindful love program, which I can do in person in Northern Colorado, or I do online and I work with couples and individuals there. And then I'm also starting a, um, like a mindfulness, conscious love for couples kind of 101 to work on the basic components of a conscious relationship. And then I'm also doing um, mindful love dating profiles and upgrading people's profiles. Yeah. That's awesome. That That's really awesome. To that's know. And one thing I really like about what you said um, and about love and it being one, uh, probably the strongest power and force in the world is to me, when I hear love, one of the biggest things I think about. I know everybody's definition might be subjective and they might have their own version. But for me, one of the I think one of the big universal keys of love is doing stuff without expecting anything in return. You know, there's a lot of love in holding that door open for that person that is struggling or even if they're not struggling, you know, there's love with you know, telling your your friend to drive safe on their way home, you know. So the I think people hear love and they just tied to the butterflies and rainbows. But like you just said, you know, it's that powerful force, whether it's friendships, business relationships or networking. I think it truly is that that powerful universal force that always makes everything better. Like I said, you hold open that door you know, that might strike a conversation right there for you to get to know somebody. You uh, help somebody without expecting anything in return. You know, maybe you're they're at the register. They're short a dollar or 50 cents. You give them that. You never know. You might made a new friend or maybe a girlfriend potentially. So mm -hmm. I, I like that you said that. And I think, you know, 
most people that hear that they might think, oh, you sound like a, a religious person, which I'm not sure if you are. If you are, that's OK. Uh, but I, I just thought that was uh, really key there. And I think, uh, you know, that can add a lot of value for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm a spiritual person and mm -hmm. um, I've went through religion. I went through mm -hmm. Catholicism when I was young and became an atheist for a while. But mm -hmm. the path, all paths that have led me down a spiritual I've had some mystical experiences when actually when I was um, in catechism in the in the Catholic Church. So I've been really and it's funny because one of the first ones I had were Jesus. I was we were taught to meditate backwards prayer. We were called and I was 13. We went into a meditation and Jesus had his hands on my heart. And it just blew my heart open and I just leaked and mother Mary was behind him and they were looking at me with so much love and it was all my heart. And it's almost like I got activated into my Dharma or my path at that time. That's awesome. And, and I, I'd like to, you know, I mostly identify as a spiritual person for, uh, overall as well. So, and I think that, that, that totally is respectable. I think sometimes, you know, people are looking for that, that traditional religious box. Uh, but I, I think there's always a path inner to, to inner spirit and, uh, inner peace as well. One thing I would like to start off in, I know a lot of people in internet spaces these days, especially on the topic of marriage, relationships, uh, we like to talk about the negative, you know, what, that's what sells. That's what gets clicks. And I'm sure we'll stumble into some negative things to uh, bring up. But I wanted to start off with some positives to really learn from you. What would you say, you know, especially these days, it feels like, you know, a lot of men don't like the thought of marriage because, you know, the marriage laws and things are still conditioned to, you know, the, the, famous line is she could get half if it goes wrong and what incentive do I have and then you have a lot of women on the other hand that's you know they may have lack trust issues and you know because they're able to have uh, great careers and uh, handle their own business a lot of them are saying hey I could wait as long as I could to marriage I don't I'm in no rush and marriage is looking like the the big bad wolf these days mm -hmm. um what would you say is a, a green flag uh, for a relationship or marriage or, or even a, a dating relationship? <laughs> well, first, I want to talk about marriage. It's a very old tradition, um, very singular roles or expectations mm -hmm. out of it. And we've grown out of that. Yeah. And our relation, I feel like our relationship containers haven't caught up to that yet. And mm -hmm. it's causing this dichotomy between the sexes now, you know, and when it does, then our, we, like I talked about, our ego comes in. What I want, I want a man with money. I want this. I want that. I want, want, want. And then the men are like, well, I don't want this, but I do want sex and I do want, 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 want. That isn't mm -hmm. love. And I think we've strayed away with it because we're trying to fit into this old model of what marriage and relationships are. And the shoe doesn't fit anymore. I think that's good. That's good. very well said. Sammy, do you uh, want to jump in here? Yeah. Yeah. So, so she said the, the shoe doesn't fit. So just by like an educated guess of yours, right? What, when do you, what period do you think that these things stopped? It, 80s, 90s? Good question. It, it, I don't think it, I think it was a very progressive thing, but it's like women wanting their rights. And I, um, I feel like a women's rights movement got used against women. They're like, sure. Get an education, get a job, but you're still responsible for the home. You're still responsible for the kids. And oh, but you may work all day, but you still have to wait on your husband. Mm -hmm. So it, mm -hmm. you know, people started, you know, having animosity and then women were tired and weren't able to give to the men like the women who stayed home. And that was their job. Do you, so, do you, think, do you think waiting on your husband is wrong? No, not necessarily. I think, um, and I think everybody's so individual. 
I, mm -hmm. you know, it's just got to be respect on both ends mm -hmm. and listen to your partner's needs and wants. And when you truly are in that heart space, I think it's easy to be devoted and mm -hmm. wait on and, and be sensitive to your partner's needs rather than I'm not getting this or, you know, she's tired and she's sick and she didn't make my dinner. Great. So what would you say it are, you know, relationship green flags that a lot of people miss or green flags in general that could lead people into creating and sustaining a healthy relationship? <laughs> Well, one, like the top two is trust and communication. And I'm going to be pretty honest here. And I think everybody's experienced it um, to the listeners or you that people overlook red flags. And every when you really sit and listen, this is what I say. This is if you want the green flags and the red, sit, observe and listen, mm -hmm. because people tell you who they are. And with that comes communication, being able to communicate, knowing what you want, being able to communicate what you want. And if you're meeting somebody, they know what they want in a relationship. You know, that's a green flag. Um, also, you know, and then honesty, you know, you know, you can kind of feel it or, or you know, when people stumble over something or talk out of the sides of their mouth, are they being honest? Or are they wearing a mask because they just want to be liked? So that's definitely something. Do they talk bad about their ex? And if they're talking about their ex, uh, badly about their ex, and a green flag, on the other hand, would be, you know, being able to take responsibility for their side of it. Mm -hmm. Another thing, are they kind? Yeah, they could be nice to you on your first and second date. Are they kind to the wait staff? Are they mm -hmm. kind to the, do they hold the door for that person? Mm -hmm. okay. You know, it, there's so many subtle things like with bo body language. Are they able to look you in the eye when they're talking to you? I mean, it doesn't have to be a stare down, but um, being able, comfortable, because if you can't look somebody in the eye, um, that's kind of a red flag because it's like they don't want something to be seen. So those are, those are, I mean, I, there's a long list, but that's, mm -hmm. you know, one, it's those subtle ones, but I encourage people stop and listen. Don't go on dates. Oh, please like me, like me, like me, like me. You know, so you're talking, talking, talking. I'm like, I'm sure we've all been on dates like that. And it's like, oh my gosh, I just want to, I'm like, you don't, you can't even say, can you excuse me so I can take a breather in the bathroom? But, you know, because people think that we want to jam us down other people's throats so they like us and actually it's attractive and that's another quality that's a green flag do they listen are are they truly curious about you or just how hot you are very very true and, and thank you for that and i i think you know it's easy to for, for it's part of what you mentioned i think a lot of people uh ignore red flags because one they want the their ego it goes back to ego kind of wants that a kind of thrill and accomplishment that i've won this person over i cracked the code i i i got this person to like me but on the other hand i do think there's kind of an instant gratification component to it do you think lust in and sex is a big reason why uh you know, that clouds people's judgment to ignore red flags. Would you say that's also yeah. a big component along with the ego? <laughs> I tell my clients often, if you're super duper attracted to somebody, it's usually not a good thing. It's usually related to um, your issue with one of your parents that you have the worst connection with that you're still trying to work out, even if they're subtle ones. I mean, your family would be great, but there's no family that comes from a perfect idealized relationship place. We're all humans and growing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like trying to think of my train of thought here. Um reiterate the question again <laughs> yeah no problem at all so yeah i think you know talking about 
ignoring red flags. Okay. Yeah. I think there's a, a ego component to it for sure, Thank because, you. you know, sometimes in the heat of dating, we want this person to like us or, you know, the people want to feel like they cracked the code and got the person on their good side. So mm-hmm. would you also say the, uh, a, a component said, that's as big to ignore red flags. Would you say lust and uh, yeah. uh, pleasure thank is you. Thank, also thank you for reiterating that. Yes, <laughs> and lust is a natural part. I mean, chemistry is a natural, primitive part of attraction, and mm-hmm. that's what makes your friend different from your significant other, or your lover. You know, and that piece, that attraction, needs to be there. But it doesn't need to be huge and blown up either. It can be slow, like, ooh, I get like, as I get to know this person, I'm, you know, I'm moving slowly and getting to know this person. I think with lust, though, it's, it is instant gratification. It's dopamine dump. It's, it's just like scrolling through your phone. It's just like doing drugs and alcohol. It, it can be very addictive. And then when people are alone or lonely, it feels all the better. And you think it's love that lost that feeling. And you're like, or you don't care if that person's not good for you because it feels so good. Right. Sammy, you want to jump in? <laughs> yeah. So in, so in cases where people ignore the red flags, right? Would you say that's like a, a trait that's passed down from, from what they see from their mother or father? Or do, do you think that's just something that, you know, they pick up from friends or pick up along the way, or they just, you know, they're really attracted to a person that they're just willing to like, Block it on dead airs. That's that's a great question, and sometimes because of past trauma, we're attracted to the person that isn't good for us. You know, it's like a moth to a flame in a way. Um, and then because and those are those very intense connections. You know that your psyche is trying to work out, your subconscious is trying to work out some of these issues, like I talked about. But yeah, and it's it's easy to do that. It's confusing because that um, fantasy about what it can be, and that's and that's really checking yourself on that and trying to stay conscious. And that's when I talk about conscious relationships, staying in the moment and staying real. And these days with every age that I coach stop moving so fast because it's like you move really fast. You jump in, you have all these feelings which are chemically induced. Oh my gosh, it's love. Wait a minute. You changed or, you know, I don't, I don't like that you're doing well. You don't know that person and you think you know them just because you feel, you know, you feel attracted to them and that's not knowing them and that's not love. Right. So in, in, in terms of in terms of like, you know, all the things going around nowadays and like the, this this newer generation, right, where everything is equality, this equality that, you know, we want 50 50 treatment. Is there such thing really as a 50 50 relationship? You no, know what I've seen in relationships is as long as there was respect. But I think that's part of a conscious relationship is being there to pick the other person up and maybe you give 70, but then when you're down, you know, and I feel like it's a constant balance, Mm -hmm. but there are some relationships that get set up where somebody just gives, 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 and somebody just takes, takes, takes. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, that's where the respect comes in. And I think if both people come in and really want to do for their partner, you know, if they've been more awakened, if they can take care of themselves and love themselves mm-hmm. and, you know, hold that space, it's so much easier to be able to love and hold that space for somebody else. Yeah, right. that's, that's great. Yep. And you've said you've said a couple things um, that that really uh, varied things that I want to go into, but I want to stick with a, a track and I want to back back up to it. Yeah. Um, you said something really key about, you know, when someone's 
extremely attracted to an individual that, you know, you, you should kind of be really hyper aware of that and cautious, essentially. So I think, you know, some people, you know, would take care of that and take that to the extreme and say, hey, do you want me to be with someone that I don't feel nothing for or that I have no chemistry for? No, I don't hear you saying that. I know you I know you're not saying that, but I know some people can go think of it that way. Uh, I think what you're saying is more of us should be open to uh, maybe dating and talking and listening to someone who may not check off all our physical boxes, and then we can grow to be wildly attracted to them. So, for instance, uh, you've, you know, I'm sure counseled and helped so many men and women. Have you seen that, you know, let's take women, for example, typically women want someone who's taller than them uh, in heels and stronger than them, you know, some exaggerated and say six feet. But essentially, you're saying women, you know, would uh, and would be maybe a little happier and form more meaningful connections if instead of looking for that six feet guy, you get to know that five, eight guy and maybe attraction grows organically or even men. She may not be uh, five foot one and short like you want her. But if you talk to this girl five, five attraction can build and grow. I think a lot of us think attraction is supposed to be instant. Can you, can you speak to that more? I, I, am I getting that right? You're, you're not saying rule out physical chemistry, but you're saying it can build. <laughs> this isn't who we are. This is our right. packaging. It's right. not true. And this physical being is not going to sustain a relationship. Right. There's eventually there's going to be times where there isn't that kind of deep sexual attraction. And sometimes, you know, but if we get to know people, you know, and now, you know, those qualities on the inside, like picking out if you have similar values, like uh, similar spiritual or religious values, similar, I, uh, you know, political values are, you know, especially important these days. And um, I mean, you can still be with someone, but really studies have shown that the more that you do have in common with someone and you don't have to have everything in common, but your core values. So I, I heard you just say um, there, there's going to be moments where there's not a, a, a deep sexual connection, right? So is it possible to have a good thriving relationship if a lot of sexual things aren't involved? Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Thank you for asking that question. No, I, I, I just really want to know because I yeah, hear no, people. No, no, I'm like, I, I'm excited to answer I it. I hear women say a lot like, oh, this guy should wait this long, this long, and this long. And then, you know, sometimes they'll say something outrageous like three years or two years. Or, is that possible? I think everybody's individual. But speaking of that, people, we've been putting too much on sexual intimacy and intimacy is more than just sex. Right, right, right. And if you have those other components of intimacy, like communication or that care or, you know, using your love language, touch, you know, being concerned and um, taking care of things for that other person there. I think everybody's so focused on the sexual intimacy that we lose out on the other one. And men need sex to feel connected to their partner. Thank you. Thank you for that. Do you think in the age of women empowerment that women kind of neglect that fact on purpose? <laughs> I think we've felt so manipulated. And then I think it's like gone to an extreme where, um, I was just talking to a young woman who was in college and she's just mm -hmm. like, I hate men. And I'm like, I feel like men hate women right now too. And right. it's because of the polarities that are happening. She goes, they tell me they want a relationship. They tell me they want this, 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 this. I don't want to jump in. I want to take my time. Mm -hmm. And then the, every moment they're trying to, you know, kind of hedge me into having sex with them. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, I don't like, I, I don't want to do that anymore. And I don't want to be lied to anymore. 
And yeah, I, and on the other hand, I think there, you know, there's a small component of men out there who are, you know, players and, you know, but it's only a small portion. And unfortunately, especially among older men and younger men are the loneliness, loneliest and most sexless groups out there. Right. Yeah, I, I I am hearing a lot of that. Thank you for confirming that, because mm-hmm. I'm I'm sure you're you're able to to speak to many of these men and and have that information. Uh, it's funny. This this is kind of what I wanted to pivot to next, because um, I think you know the topic on uh, men's need for sex and women's need for sex. I think it ties into desire discrepancy, which I. I was listening on one of your uh, episodes on the yes. Love Anarchy podcast with uh, Andrea Casciano about that. Yes. And I think it's a very interesting topic because I think men and women could love each other to death. They can even have core values uh, and, and all the whole nine yards. But I, I do think, you know, no matter how much we've evolved as a society, this is just my opinion. Uh, mm-hmm. Men do tend to need sex a little bit more. It's a, it's a little bit more of a, a passionate hunger, typically not all the time. And I think desire discrepancy, as you guys were touching on in that episode, is essentially, you know, what sex should be like in your perspective versus the reality of what it is. So, you know, you could have a thriving relationship but you want to have sex maybe every day or get sexual every day and your your partner may want it once a month or once every two months right is that something that you find killing marriages and relationships in general that that discrepancy (laughs) it, it, it just doesn't match like I said, in a lot of the other components that I talked about, the green flag components aren't there. And a mm-hmm. lot of times, too, people jump into relationships and say, oh, it'll change or it'll work itself out. And it's not talked about a lot either um, about needs and wants. And what I find, too, when I work with a lot of couples it's like men are physical. It's very visual and very physical. And know what? We're you know, where intimacy and sex starts with women here. Yeah. Like, don't go up and grab her and what, you know, whatever. Be, talk to her, like, and, you know, and um, spread it out a little more. And I think it's just like, um, you know, busy, busy, busy. She's exhausted. She lays down in bed. He rolls over and he's like, okay, come on. You look good because that's how they're aroused. And then women are just like, Oh my gosh, you know, men start this way before come home with the, you know, come home with some flowers and dinner and, um, you know, start, you know, little things. Yeah. A little, you know, intimacy things. And it doesn't necessarily have to be sexual, but, you know, make her feel like see her. And, right. um, that's a, a lot of things too. It's just like, well, can't you just get turned? I'm like, Oh no. Women, women aren't like that. Right, right, right. So, in just just to touch on a little bit on on what Dave just asked you, yeah. right? So, let's say if if a woman is constantly, you know, denying her man on that type of case, right? Is the man now justified to look for it elsewhere? See, is, is that, is that yeah. an okay reason to break things off? If, if that's a huge value of his too, but I would, as a coach, I say, let's, let's talk about it. What's underneath it. Usually there's other things underneath it. And oftentimes I just feel, um, not always, but the woman is feeling not seen, not heard, not respected. And she's, you know, and then she's not attracted in that way. You know, and if, you know, if she's feeling ignored, it's really hard for her to feel that kind of attraction if there's no other intimacy there. And I think there's a lot of reasons why relationships do break up. But I always encourage people to explore what's underneath it for them so they don't con- they don't continue it in the next relationship. Mm-hmm. Do you find that? there are relationships that their core values are aligned, 
but maybe there is a discrepancy with uh, sex, but they're still able to sustain it. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, okay. I've seen it a lot. And there's um, different times um, in their life. Like if a woman after having a baby, for example, she's not feeling um, like a lot of her sexual energy is actually going, the energy is going toward caring for that child. And you're, you physiologically kind of, you know, block that off because the energy needs to be survival of the child. But then too, she was super stretch woman. She may not feel her body's not quite back and she may not feel Mm. as attractive and, you know, and she's tired. I mean, that's just, you know, one example. And two, I mean, there is plenty of erectile dysfunction for many, I mean, young men. And we could talk about porn because and oh, that yeah. has a lot to do with it too. So it can go, I've seen both sides mm-hmm. where the men have just kind of have kind of cut it off for a variety of reasons. And it's usually having something to do with how they feel. But two, let's say a woman, again, going back to the example, communicate that. Just say, I really want to get back to being intimate. I may, my body just went through a lot of different changes. I'm not feeling sexual or confident right now. Can you have a little patience with me? I want to get back to that. And I think truly both couples and couples or both partners in a couple want sexual intimacy. And yeah, men are more vocal about wanting it. Women want it too. It's yeah. just, we just go about it differently. Yeah, that's, that's very, very well said. And I, I, I feel the exact same way. I, I think we just kind of somewhat got different paths, but we mostly want to get to the same destination. Um, and I even think myself included, I, I think, you know, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm in a long-term relationship, but, but I think sometimes in the heat of day to day, you can forget that, oh, she doesn't receive this like a man would receive it i may be receive it that way affection that way but she doesn't always see see it that way so it, it is really important to keep those those little subtleties um in mind um are you would you say that in general uh due to our uh everything texting online messaging um especially for the men but period but that's why men are lacking on that verbal intimacy that game of being able to have a conversation mentally stimulate the woman because i gotta be honest i i I do you know i do notice talking to a lot of men not every of course but it's rare that you talk to a guy and he's like actually being engaged and genuinely curious and and you could make friends with them. So I could only imagine on a dating level, a lot of women are like, wow, they're not mentally stimulating me. They don't really care. They're not really peaking my interest. I do think men neglect that because they think I could just swipe and, and get the same result. Yeah. So is that a lost art? Uh, to just oh having great God. conversation. <laughs> I, yes. I was just reading a study about that before COVID, but COVID really jammed us into isolation. And a lot of times people, like you said, you talk to other guys and they're not social. But up the ante a little bit an attractive woman no forget about it it's just Mm -hmm. like i'm like well they're not just going to come to your front porch and i'm sorry you're going to have to get a little more uncomfortable i think we all do we need to put ourselves out there socially as just for health of a society and a culture and have connection not just in an intimate way and i think that's why a lot of people are having sex too because in just sex, because they're getting a little bit of that. But we need depth and intimacy in connection, whether it be with a significant other or friends. We, you know, we need that to survive. And if you're only going out and pushing yourself to be social just to get a date, you know, it, it kind of defeats the purpose. I think 
uh, and like you mentioned earlier that if you're nice, you hold the door for people, you, you just go out with love and that energy, you're going to attract people to you. And who knows, maybe the guy that you talk to has a great sister or cousin who's saying, oh my gosh, you're perfect for this person. And, but not having the intention of going out to find someone that's like everybody's chasing, chasing. I got to find love. I got to, I'm like, well, it's not going to work like that. It's kind of like hands off a little bit and go out and get connected with everybody. And yes, we have to relearn some social skills. I like that. I like that a lot. And I, I think that sense of community, it, it feels good. Cause even the other day, you know, where we're, we were at a, a Sammy and I were actually at a, a barbecue for Memorial Day and uh, for our, uh, our mom's birthday. And the neighbor just came over casually and, you know, passed over a plate of food and was talking about how much she finds my mom great and nice and, and how my mom's giving her food. And then the, some of her family members came over to get to know uh, us and I was like I had a light bulb moment thinking about it. I'm like wow that's that's something that's missing and I I know I truly want to see more of that because you know here are some neighbors that really don't know each other but they're able to talk like they've known each other for years and you know that's how connection form you, yeah. you never know who will need to have your back or uh to keep you in mind and and I just thought it was a very very uh subtly magical moment for me at least <laughs> yes it, it, and also it helps with 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 the practice that i was talking about before dave because think about it back when we was younger you had to walk up to somebody in in in, in introduce yourself introduce mm -hmm. your name go through like basics and and stuff like that now people just want to you know tippity tap on their phone mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and and now when they actually with somebody, it's awkward. They don't even know mm -hmm. where to start. They don't even know where. Like that's the basics for them now is just whatever social media is now. <laughs> and I I feel like that's definitely ruining dating scenes and regular scenes as well. Yeah, and even on college campuses, guess how they meet people on Tinder. I'm like, yeah. hello, you're Sweet. there in IRL. I'm like. What do you mean? You don't, you look down and everybody's on their phone. I'm like, yeah. you know, where, where'd you meet that person you're dating on Tinder? I'm like, why? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you all pretty, you all pretty much are single, right? About the same age, have similar interests, right? Especially people in your major. Hello. What a great opportunity, but no, they meet on dating apps. It's not all of them. They still have friends of friends, but I encourage people to go out and um, move beyond that. Even, you know, but I'm an introvert, but that's okay. You still need connection. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as much as an extrovert does, but we, we all need that to survive. Absolutely. Do you also think, Andrea, that there's a component of it um, that women subtly uh, are socially programmed that I should never at least take the first step and say hi or I like your shoes or strike up conversation. I do also think, you know, we did hold the men accountable as we should, but I also do think there's a, a there's a layer of it where it's 2023. If 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 you think this guy's shoes is nice and he happens to be in the same social setting and he looks like you want to chat. Tell him his shoes is nice to break the ice or, hey, I, I my brother has those, you know, make something up to, 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 to break the ice. I do think there's a component of women haven't let go of that social programming of the man has to say it first. The, the man has to act first. And then I, I do also think to some degree there's right. men are shy and too nervous because you know, they don't want to be the creep, the quote unquote creep. So I do mm -hmm. think that ties into it with the lack of social skills. But do you also feel that women have to loosen up with that that programming of he if he doesn't initiate it, then we're not having the conversation, really? You know what I'm thinking about is all these rules. Right. It, that it, me too. Oh, and I'm like, I'll like the data coach. If you want this, do X, Y, Z. I'm yeah. like, you got to give it a little gray in yeah. different situations and women 
need to loosen up and loosen up their social ability and let a guy know you're interested. Yes. Smile yes. at them. Hold eye contact a little yeah. bit longer. Move a little closer to him. Yes. 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 You know, and like in the like, well, that, like a guy a ton. Not to, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry, no, but they sometimes like a guy a ton, but hide it so well and not even not even be intentional about giving him a little bit of those hints. Like you said, like sit closer uh compliment him uh you know have warmer energy be inviting those things go a long way and i think you know sometimes women try to be so uh have a poker face so much that sometimes you might you might not realize you could have you know started something meaningful maybe <laughs> meaningful. missed opportunity yeah and there's two reasons for that because some men are creeps and yes. women, women don't want to put that vibe out because they put the vibe out the guy they're interested in. And then also the, you know, that energy is out, you know, if she's like, you know, peacocking a little, you know, mm -hmm. then the creep is going to notice. And, you know, so some women have had just so many cat calls and creepy dudes approach them that they're just like, I just, I just rather not. So it's, um, it, but also and then on the other hand, men need to be hit in a, with a brick. It's Some true. things don't work. Well, I kind of like, I stood near him and I, you know, and yeah. I offered him some food or something. I'm like, no, he said, mom, no, she's too, you know, she's too good. Men need to clear sign. My next door, my next door neighbor is single and he was at the gym. And he was working out and he noticed one time this woman sm smiled at him and held eye contact. He's like, okay, smiled back, whatever. Did She did it again. <laughs> By the third time, he finally walked over and said, well, I'm not going to make you continue to do that. I'm going to introduce myself. So, you know, women, you need to do that, you know, and not toward everybody. I, right. You know, when I kind of get that, I get why women want to be protective but it's not against everybody so it, it, i got a kind of a cliche one for you yeah in in your whole experience of doing what you're doing right how many times have you seen like like long distance things work out and actually pan out and in 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 another and in and also what what would you say it, it, would you how realistic would you do you see it that is a great question because um ldrs are really more popular now especially since covid since everybody right. started getting on their phone and expanding but one of my guests actually was a high school football player that i went to high school with and his story is great it's on my podcast and he was dating he had all these failed relationships with narcissistic drug addicted i'm mean, like it was like drama trauma and then he was online and he met this woman from the philippines didn't think much of it i'm like that's pretty far <laughs> and um <laughs> they started talking and talking and talking now he moved out there probably six months ago and they got they, they got married wow. so it totally successful and i think it depends on the individuals and again your values or needs do you need your partner you know to be there for you be accessible or are you a little more independent it's kind of nice to you know be able to do my own thing um so it's it, it depends on the people and again the trust the communication needs to be in there um and while I think people can have a relationship like my friend Chris um, and, and Jenny, that I truly believe, like, meet somebody, you know, meet somebody in person, because there's a lot about their energy that you'll mm -hmm. learn to mm -hmm. and being in their presence. Mm -hmm. Even this, even being on videos better than just messaging. I don't really think messaging is real communication anyway. Yeah, it's not a it's not a conversation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. So I think it really depends on the people, how evolved they are. And and then sometimes I think, oh, is it just somebody who's afraid to really get involved? 
you know, um, and then sometimes too, they find out that it was a total scam. The person wasn't anything like they said they were. I mean, that can happen easier from a distance. I see it happen like, a, like I'm in Northern Colorado in Denver an hour away, people dating and they're like, oh my gosh, totally was not that person. Mm. So, so let's say, so let's say if it's like two people that are already like, you know, been involved with each other for a long time and been mm -hmm. dealing with each other for a long time. And let's say somebody, you know, for an example, has like a, a job opportunity yeah. and it's very far away. Do you think that's something that they should break off, keep trying to go at or? It goes back to values. Is the relationship above the work or is mm. the work above the relationship? It really comes back to what your values are and that both people are on the same page. And David said earlier, if you really, truly love someone, let them go, let them be who they are, but also know yourself enough. Is this going to work for you? I would like to, you know, I, I you know, we're running a, a, a little bit of, uh, over 40 minutes but that's okay i just wanted to be respectful of your time of course Andrea. but i want to uh kind of get into this a little bit before we uh, end up wrapping up i want to talk about loving yourself because i i don't yes. i think we hear that a lot uh but i don't think in our fast-paced society i don't think we sit back and let that marinate of what that might mean to us and how to do that for our own selves um even me, I'm a work in progress, but I'm trying to do better to do things like that, like practice meditation um, and and practice, you know, breathing, exercising, deep breathing and taking a step back or taking more self-care days like massages and whatnot. And I, I know it'll look different for everyone. But like, what would you say if to someone that says, you know, I don't I don't know how to love myself or I don't know what that looks like? Uh, what's a good starting point for them if they're struggling with love in their selves? I think it's first uh, <laughs> getting out of the matrix too. Mm -hmm. And what we've been brainwashed to believe what, what love is and that you need somebody to complete you. You know, you mm. need somebody to, um, you're not whole until you have somebody else. And that's where the self-love comes from and the, the like the component of being whole knowing yourself like we talked about what are your values also having other relationships that are deep and fulfilling like friendships and family you're working on all of these because i think a lot of people get in relationships and say okay now i don't have to have any friends or i don't because i have my significant other it's it's too much pressure and that person can't be everything for you you need to be everything for you and i think what we're taught is self-love is like well i lost weight i look good again yeah. the meat soup <laughs> This is, and actually the most attractive quality is like somebody who really does not care what other people think. That's self-love, you know? And it's like, I'm trying to do that. But if you really don't, and not in a nasty or defensive way, but more in the way of, no, I'm, I'm going to put myself first. If they think that about me, peace out. You know, that's, that's cool. That's their perspective. And what we think about other people usually has to do with ourselves anyhow. And we're not taught self-love. What are we taught to get everything from outside ourselves? And I love those practices that you're doing, David, because that's how you know yourself and how your brain works, getting into your heart energy and not having it all about an intimate partner. That's great. That, that, that Thank you for that. And I, I, I just wanted the uh, one thing I want to also piggyback off of that is, you know, as someone who, who practices meditation, is there a wrong way to do it? How do you know it's working for you? I, I think that's a question. A lot of people that try it tend to wonder. I know I do. Oh. <laughs> So that's among the spiritual path. It's like, am I enlightened yet? Um, we like in these practices, especially like meditation, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> and that's so ego. Like I'm like, I, I want to know I'm doing it right. 
And all it really is, is sitting there. And what I learned from being a yoga teacher and yogic meditation, it's really just being able to observe how your mind works and how kind of stupid your mind is. Because your mind really only goes here into the past and noticing the things that get played over and over and letting them go. And actually, when you're meditating correctly, you are training your mind. You are stepping like above your um, just your unconscious behaviors and being able to learn, learn how your mind works and how it tricks you. And uh, that's yeah. why in meditation has so many benefits. And I know there's been studies after studies, but, you know, I, I love to tell your listeners, try it. And no, there isn't way there's um, like shamatha meditation, which is a Buddhist meditation that I practiced for a while where you, you can stare at something, but we're so worried about doing it right. It's so simple. But there is not, you know, it's sitting with exactly what's going on. And we want to, my mind's not clear. Well, sit there anyways. When your mind is all over the place, just sit there. It's a practice. Great. That, that makes me, <laughs> that makes me, gives me some clarity to, you know, learn to let go of that ego aspect of yes. just do, don't, don't try to judge yourself. I think that's a big part of it too. Uh, but I can honestly say that every time I do it, I feel better afterwards. I, I don't feel like I feel came in. And so I, I know there's something to it. And anyone that watches, I, I encourage them to just try it. You know, there's there's so many like quick five minute, 10 minute YouTube guided ones that, yes. you know, you could, you know, try out, see how you feel. I, I think it's it's a very, very valuable tool. People avoid hearing themselves feeling their feelings, and that's what you do. And it's it's just discipline of sitting on the mat. That's it. Mm -hmm. Sit on the mat, close your eyes, and breathe. And mm -hmm. that's some, for some people so hard to do because they're like, I don't know what's going to come up. And I'm like, well, how do you know who you are or yourself if you don't look at the things that are coming up? Excellent. Sammy, you, you have yeah. anything yeah. To, to add yeah, to wrap this up? Yeah, I just got one more quick one. Uh, so before you was uh doing doing the you know helping people with the their relationships and their growth and spiritual growth and all that, was there like a an experience or you know some type of moment or 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 sign that that made you want to take it into like podcast form and and and, and, and all those other like platforms that you're doing? Well, yeah, the plot, the social media and stuff all came out of COVID. Mm -hmm. And my podcast, I know we're energy, right? right? We can, you know, we can feel each other's energy. So mm -hmm. everybody was complaining about being lonely. I'm like, if we're just energy, how can we connect? And that's what my podcast was about. Mm. And that is basically like connecting with yourself, connecting with other people. It's just consciousness. So that really motivated me. And I heard some really bad dating podcasts with really bad <laughs> advice. So oh. that's when I'm like, yeah. So it scared me. I, yeah. Like It's like, yeah, it's like a friend. Oh, I got a podcast. I'm like, oh, holy crow. They would get drunk, him and his neighbor, female, and do everything that they tell their um, listeners not to do. Not to know. Oh, God. <laughs> it was, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have to get on there. <laughs> so that was part of it, too. Thank you so much, Andrea, for uh, taking the time to have this conversation with us. I truly believe uh, anyone that takes the time to watch this can uh, get a lot of value and wisdom uh, from you um, as a content expert in these areas. And I, I truly think uh, conversations like this between men and women that are coming in with an open heart and open mind, we learn so much for each other in and this honestly, truly uh, has made my week so far. And uh, I, I thank you for your time, truly, Andrea. <laughs> yes, and getting to know and being open to having these conversations. And yeah, and we're not on sides. You right, know, you're exactly. not on one side and we're on the other. We are all connected. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. We would love yeah. to have you again, too. We, oh, we, I, we, should try this, we should try this again, seriously. 
I, yeah, I love it. so much more to talk about, but I, I want to be respectful of your time. Yeah. Yes, I, I can go on. And that's what I said, too. And we touched on things. I'm like, I'm going to keep it short. But you could see me going off on tangents because there is so, it's so rich and it's on everybody's mind right now about like them. I, you know, I don't like them. I'm like, they're, they're a part of us. Mm-hmm. And I don't, you know, dating and blah, this is all bad, 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 bad. It's like, step back. We're all humans. And exactly. we're, all, we're all going through it together. And we're all perfectly imperfect. So get over yourself, whatever side you're on. <laughs> exactly. There doesn't need to be a side. We're, we're, we're all on our best men and women together, honestly. Agreed. Right. All right. Well, uh, thanks again, Andrea. Um, um, I'm sure we'll be in touch at some point in the future. And uh, you have a great night, okay? Yeah. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Have a lovely night. All right. You too. Bye bye.